Now we want to get right to the theme of this session. The reality of this pulsating with God life to which we are called and the role of the scriptures in that transformative process. Now first, let's just be absolutely clear about this business of spiritual formation. The goal of the Christian life is richer, deeper, fuller formation into Christ's likeness. Paul said to the Galatians, I am in travail until Christ be formed in you. That's what we mean when we speak of spiritual formation. To the Romans, Paul said, for those whom God foreknew, them he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. And to the Thess Thess uh, Corinthians, excuse me, he said, all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord the Spirit. Formed, conformed, transformed, now all of this forming, conforming, transforming reality in the heart and in the mind and in the soul comes from a life that is beyond ourselves. You see, the life that we are created for is this dynamic, pulsating, with God life. And Jesus, in his life, death, and resurrection has made this life available to you and to me, this life that is life indeed. Paul writes, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now Paul is here using a very specific word to identify the secret of our life which is hid with God in Christ. Zoe, the eternal uncreated life that originates in God alone. Now scripture identifies two types of life, bios, biological, physical, created life, and zoe, spiritual, eternal life. Likewise, there are two kinds of death. Telete, physical death, and thanatos, spiritual death. And so it's entirely possible for a person to be physically alive, bios, and be spiritually dead, thanatos. But the salvation that is in Jesus Christ immerses us into the hidden reservoir of divine love and power, flooding our lives with God's life, God's zoe, and forming us into radical communities of Jesus' disciples who are empowered to express his life and love through our own life, individually and corporately. Jesus declares, I've come that you might have zoe, life, and that you might have it more abundantly. In his first epistle, John writes, God gave us eternal life, zoe, and this life, this zoe is in his son. And in Romans, Paul writes, <coughs> For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, 
much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his zoe, his life, 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 life. It's little wonder that in the spirit of the disciplines, Dallas Willard observes that the simple and wholly adequate word for salvation in the New Testament is life. The apostles declared we are being saved by his life. And you see, Jesus' resurrection convinced them that this life, this zoe, was indestructible. Those glorious words, he is risen, proved to the disciples that the new life that had been ever present with them in the person and teaching of Jesus could not be destroyed by killing the body. That life, that zoe, continues on. No human or demonic power can overcome it. The gates of hell cannot stand against it. And this unquenchable, indestructible zoe that Jesus offers to all who trust in him, life here and now and on into eternity. Jesus' resurrection is the great eschatological fact of all time. It is a new order of life, of zoe. By means of the resurrection, Jesus' life, Jesus' zoe, is available to everyone, to you and to me. All who trust in him can experience his life in them. Christ in you, the hope of glory, as Paul puts it. Likewise, all who trust in him are in Christ. You see, Christ in us and us in Christ. A new order of life from above. Colossians 3, 4 states it ever so succinctly. Christ, who is your zoe, your life. That's the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. Now, this life is only for participants. It's not for mere observers. It's not for consumers. Consumer Christianity is a contradiction in terms. The consumer approach says, it's my life. And I will utilize this with God life to suit my needs and my purposes. But to be blunt, the Zoe life of God simply doesn't work that way. If I am to enter this Zoe, this eternal, uncreated life that originates in God alone, I must surrender my life. When I enter the with God life, it isn't my life anymore. It's Christ's life, and I'm privileged to be a participant in that life. And what a life it is. It is more virulent than AIDS. But instead of infecting us with death, it consumes us with life, the life to which we are suited, the life to which we've been created for. And because it is Zoe life, it has a principle of its own. No human being can control it. It will move us irresistibly, overwhelmingly, inevitably, relentlessly into Christ-likeness. For example, we don't give an instruction book to a baby to teach it to walk. No, the